Hey guys, how you doing? It's Dan here and it's great to see you all again. In this video, I want to talk about a couple of new features in the brand new DaVinci Resolve update. This is the 18.5 public beta. Now there's a whole range of new features in this version. So many, I can't even list or talk about them all in this video. Um, but the two main ones I want to talk about are the new transcribing and the subtitling features. These are really important for DaVinci Resolve because it brings it up to level with other editing platforms such as Premiere and it's also going to speed up a lot of people's workflows whether you work with social media or you're using subtitles for accessibility this is a whole new level for DaVinci Resolve and the fact you can do this in the software without a subscription is very very cool it's going to bring these features to a whole new range of people now the features are very simple they're very similar to Premiere Pro if you've seen them in there um, but I want to show you how to do them in DaVinci Resolve and show you a couple of cases for how you'd use them I'm in the edit tab in DaVinci Resolve and I've got one of my old videos already loaded up in here. If you've not seen this video before, it was when I went to Werner Flow in Manchester. I was chasing a sunset with one of my mates, James. It was a really nice video. It's a, such a lovely evening. Um, if you've not seen that, definitely watch it after this video. I'll leave a link in the description below. Um, but it's just a nice little video for some drone stuff in there. A nice time lapse, a nice golden hour sunset. What more do you want than a video? Anyway. Let's generate some sub, uh, some transcripts. So we're just going to right click on the clip here and we're going to um, press transcribe audio down here. Now DaVinci Resolve is going to do its thing. It's all automatic. It's just going to analyze the clip and it is fairly quick. Now bear in mind, this is about a 10 minute video and it says it's going to take about a minute to do. I do think Premiere is a little bit quicker, but I'm sure DaVinci Resolve is going to tweak this and fine tune it and it will be just as quick as um, Premiere in the future. There we go. So now we've got a transcript. So what's really, really cool about this is we can start building an edit up without actually looking at any of our clips. So if you've got a big interview, you know, it might be 40 minutes long, this would be perfect for you. So it's what you can do here is select a bit you want to keep. So for example, I'm just gonna bring this first paragraph down and I'm just going to press insert here. And that's going to bring it down into the timeline. Now I'm going to pretend I'm cutting this video down and I don't need this little bit of the video. I'm going to jump straight into this paragraph and just going to select this bit. And again, just insert that down here. Now, so what's really cool with this is I'm actually building an edit up from a transcript without editing and out points or anything like that. It's very, very quick. So if you've got all of your audio in a shot like this and you just want to very quickly cut it down, this is brilliant for you. You can also make a sub clip as well by pressing this button here and then you can give it a new name and then press create. And that's gonna make a sub clip of a shot just in your project here. So then you can use that later on if you want to. So that's a really useful tool in DaVinci Resolve to be able to very quickly be able to put an edit together just using a transcript. But anyway, let's get on to the fun bit, the reason you're all probably here and that's the subtitling. So here we go. So from the subtitling section of this video, I'm just gonna bring the entire video down. And all we're going to do is go to timeline at the top up here and go down to uh, create subtitles from audio just here. We can only do English at the moment. I do believe DaVinci Resolve are working on other languages, which I'm sure will come in future upgrades. Uh, but for now, it is just English. I'm going to leave the caption preset as subtitle default. And I'm going to leave the max characters pair line at 42 for now. But I'm going to come on to this later on, especially for when we start doing um, subtitles for social media. I'm just going to press create. And again, DaVinci Resolve is going to do its thing. Um, it's just analyzing the text. It is fairly accurate. Um, again, like I said earlier on, it is a little bit slower than Premiere, but not too much. Whilst DaVinci Resolve is doing that, I just want to quickly mention epidemic sound. Now, have you ever been in that position where you're looking for music for your film or your videos and it takes absolutely ages you just don't know what to use you find something you think oh this is kind of all right you do your edit you do all your beats and then you think ah, you know what it's not quite right with epidemic sound you will have access to a vast library of over thirty-five thousand high quality tracks and sound effects which is really really cool specifically designed for content creators like you and me and guess what there are new tracks added all the time whether it's for your vlogs, tutorials, or cinematic masterpieces, Epidemic Sound offers an unbeatable selection of music across a wide range of genres. Head over to Epidemic Sound, the link is in the description below. Anyway, back to DaVinci Resolve, our subtitles have been generated. The subtitling in DaVinci Resolve seems to be fairly accurate, but you might find things you just want to change here and there. So, 
for example, let's change something here. I mean, they're all fairly accurate, but let's try and find, actually, is the one at the start? That Werner Flow. Here we go. So there we go, Werner Flow. That's definitely not where I am. I'm at a place called Werner Flow, so I get where it's gone wrong. Um, if I was going to go Werner Flow, just type it in as normal, and then the subtitles are updated. Now, if you want to start customizing the subtitles, you can do. It's very, very easy. You just go to track up here, and that's going to alter the look of all of the subtitles on that particular track. So here you can change the font. I'm just going to go to Open Sound. It's a font I tend to use for most things. I quite like it. You can change all of the normal stuff, such as font face, the color, and the size, all that normal stuff you expect to see when you're editing text in pretty much any application. Um, I'm going to leave the size where it is. I'm just going to make sure it's center aligned, which is quite handy. Um, you can put a stroke on it if you want. This is just going to put a different color around the text. And um, this is especially useful if you're doing social media and you want your graphics to really stand out. Transform is quite useful as well. This is, again, for social media. It allows you to place the text exactly where you want it to be. Um, so it's right in the face of your audience. And um, for normal subtitles, though, I tend just to put my um, mine down a little bit. Just so they're more closer to the bottom of the screen. Because I think when they start here, it's just a little bit too high. So I'm just going to bring mine down to about there. I sometimes put a drop shadow on, sometimes I don't. It depends what I'm doing. For social media, I probably would put a, um, a drop shadow on just to make sure the graphics are standing out a little bit more. Um, background, I always have on. Um, this just allows me to put that nice black background so my subtitles really stand out. And again, if you're doing this for social media, you can pick any colour you want and really make them stand out. If you're doing it more for accessibility, I find just a nice black and white contrast works really well. And you've got a couple of different settings here, such as your corner radius and your outline width as well. And I also just tend to put mine fairly opaque, just so that you can't see through them too much. I know some people like this a little bit lower, um, so you can do that if you want. Now, other than that, I think these subtitles are looking pretty good now. And because we've edited this on the track layer up here, that means all of the other subtitles have now been updated with the exact same theme, which is super useful. And what's really great is if you're super happy with how this is looking, you can save this as a preset. So here we go. We can save track as a preset and give this open sound. I'm just going to call it that. That means open sounds, low down background just so i know what i'm looking at when i come to different um presets i'm gonna hit okay there we go and now so now when i click on the three dots up here for the menu there we can see that preset what i've just saved and i can load that if i want to and i can also update that if need be so i can change let's say the outline width to zero go up here and then update this particular preset there we go Perfect. So now that's updated for the next time I want to use it. The next thing I want to quickly show you how to do is how to set it up so it's just one word at a time on the screen. You know, that kind of quick fire way you see on social media all the time. Boom, 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 boom. I'll show you how to do it. So all we're going to do is we're going to just zoom out a little bit. We're going to delete these subtitles because these have too many words on. We're going to go back to timeline at the top. Create subtitles from audio. Now this time we're going to put the max characters per line down to one. Now there's probably never going to be one character on the screen at once. It's going to default to one word on the screen at once. So we're going to hit create. Again, it's going to do its thing. It doesn't seem to save the analysis of the subtitling. It will generate it again. So going forward, I hope to eventually resolve tie the transcription up here and the subtitling all together, and then you'll be able to reuse it as you go through the project like you can in Premiere, but I'm more than sure that's on the roadmap. As you can see now, there is a ton of subtitles, pretty much because it's all one subtitle per word. So what we're going to do here now is we're going to click on one of the subtitles, go to track, and we're just going to make this look a little bit different. So first of all, I want it to be bigger, like that. And I want it to be in the middle of the screen. So let's change the Y position to something like that. And this time, let's do something a little bit different. We'll put the color to, let's go to a nice red. And we're going to put the opacity all the way up. And now when we hit play, we're going to get some quick fire subtitling. So 
So this is really cool if you're making subtitles for TikTok or Instagram and you can burn these into a video. So that's pretty much it for the transcription and the subtitling tools. They are both super useful and I'd love to hear down below what you think of these tools and what you think you're going to be able to achieve with them. Just before we finish this video, let me show you a couple of ways of exporting them. So we've got a couple of options. Option number one is to burn them into the video so they're always there no matter where you see. Now this has some benefits, it also has some negatives. Once they're burned in, you can't really do anything with that video. Um, but, you know, that's fine. Or we can save the subtitles as a sidecar file so their viewer has the option of turning them on and off, like you see on most YouTube videos. So I'm going to go to the Deliver tab right at the end. We're going to give our video a suitable name. There we go. And we're going to render a single clip. That's perfectly fine. H.264 is brilliant. I shot in 25. Perfect. Um, subtitle settings down here. So we've got export subtitles. We've got the format here as a separate file. And I'm going to change this to SRT. And this is going to allow us to upload the subtitles to YouTube and then give the viewer the chance to turn them on or off in the YouTube settings. And I'm sure that will work with other platforms such as Vimeo and things like that. Or we can burn them into the video like I was saying earlier on with burn into video here. And that's going to play them exactly how we see them in the program window here. And um, so you already know how that's going to look. And we're just going to hit add to render to and then perfect. You've either got a sidecar file or a burnt into the video. And you may want to even export one with the burnt in subtitles and one without. And then you've got a bit of choice with what you're going to do with the output of your video. It's always great to have different exports for different platforms and not just using the same version for every platform you work on. But guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you found this video informative and I'd love to hear what you think of the new updates DaVinci Resolve is bringing out. And I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers for watching.